Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Confessions of a Dollar Tree Addict. I'm Rena and I don't really know exactly what's prompting me to do this video, but I feel as though I just wouldn't be me if I didn't tell you guys what's going on with me. And maybe by telling you guys what's going on with me, somebody out there may be experiencing some of the same situations and may get something out of it. Um, but regardless, I just feel like I would be less genuine if I didn't share some of what is, well, you guys know for me, some is most. So, um, okay, let's address the elephant in the car, shall we? The elephant that went to Aldi's. Um, I recently did a video in Aldi's and I had like pigtails and yeah, it was definitely um, a look, but it's not my look. And I could have put my hair up in a different way, but I was severely hopped up on albuterol, which is a pump. I don't even think it's a steroidal pump, but for some weird reason, I have adverse reactions to lots of medication, including antibiotics. So I'm actually what you would call antibiotic resistant. I've, cause I've gotten pneumonia almost my entire life, twice a year practically. Um, even when I was a very young child, I have food allergies. I'm allergic to eggs, wheat, and soy. And so I'm ratting myself out at this point because, you know, at 51 years old, which is how old I am. Yeah. When I was younger, I didn't know that I was alert. Well, I did know I was allergic to strawberries and my mom's solution was to feed them to me until I'm no longer allergic to strawberries. Thank God, because that would be even worse than all my other food allergies. I love strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries. They're my fave, but um, I've been dealing with a lot. You guys know I hate the weather in New York. I honestly get sick all the time as soon as the weather changes, but I guess I have a very... I don't have a great immune system and um, that's because I am heavy. It's not a secret. You know, obesity a lot of the time does cause you to have inflammation. Um, it creates a lesser immune system in some people and I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people, guys. It's that simple. So by cheating and eating things that I'm allergic to, which I really can no longer do, but that's not even the worst of it. I know for a fact that the way for me to lose weight is to cut out sugar and white flour from my diet. I cannot have, I'm allergic to wheat and the doctor made it really clear to me that I'm allergic to whole wheat, but although I've been tested every which way possible, I'm not gluten intolerant. I don't have celiac disease. There have been several times in my life where I have gone into this cycle where I do cheat on my things that I'm allergic to, not eggs. I can have eggs as long as they are farm raised, cage free, never fed soy eggs because I really am allergic to soy and that's a really hard one. But I know for a fact it's a hard one in, in terms of that it gives me a lot of gut irritability. It makes my stomach really hurt me and that's going to cause me other problems in the future. And maybe it is causing internal inflammation. I don't know. But I have to tackle the sugar and white flour immediately because although I'm not diagnosed with celiac disease or gluten intolerance, I just know that when I eat a lot of bread, first of all, I love bread and it makes me want more bread. Um, it kind of triggers a phenomenon of craving in me, I guess, because when I don't eat anything at all, um, and I will say this, uh, I, you guys know it's confessions of a Dollar Tree addict. I am a, an alcoholic in recovery. I loved alcohol for a very long time and I still love alcohol, but I no longer drink it. And, you know, good to, for those who do, it's fine. I wish I could, but I can't because I like to drink way too much of it. Just like I love bread and when I start eating bread, it makes me want more bread and more sweet treats and 
it's a bad cycle to get into, but also when I eat even refined, because I've, my whole life I loved wheat everything, whole wheat, high fiber. The truth is from like a really young age, I was really, really all about controlling the environment in which I consumed food because when I was super young, I did have an eating disorder. I also have coffee. I have lots of beverages in here today, guys. This coffee has no sugar in it whatsoever, and it has light cream. That's it. And I need it to be boiling hot, which is why we are at 7-Eleven, because I am getting them smaller so that I can drink them when they're blazing hot, because once it's not hot anymore, it's just not good anymore. And... I know that a lot of you are going to be like, you can't sleep and you're drinking coffee. I am not taking my Adderall at this time because of everything that's going on. And as a person who has ADHD, I need coffee. I, I'm not going to drink a lot of it, but if you guys want me to like function at all in this world, I need some caffeine in this body or I'm really just going to go oh, like that. So when I was younger... I actually, I had anorexia and I had food related disorders. Um, and so I have changed my diet in my life many times over. So I know that I can change it now for a sense of control, but I guess for a long time I had given up on that um, or had to let go completely on some level in recovery in order to focus on not drinking and, you know, living a sober lifestyle. But, um, I was a vegan and that was never not good for me. But crazy thing is for me, when I was a vegan, I ate a lot of wheat products. I was a vegan. I ate so much seitan, which is made from wheat. It's like fake meat made from wheat and I loved it but I didn't know that that's what was always making me sick and I always was sickly um, and I have been hospitalized in the past with severe magnesium deficiencies because when I get pneumonia and then I take lots of antibiotics um, something happens where my body depletes itself of all of its um, minerals like it depletes itself of magnesium, number one, becomes iron deficient, and it's like a slippery slope. But I, you need magnesium in your body. And actually, magnesium is amazing. Even if you aren't magnesium deficient, everyone should take more magnesium. It helps you sleep better. It helps you have best... It's just... Magnesium is like a wonder drug, actually. And it's, you know, people don't realize it. But I was in a cardiac unit several years ago because I had taken a lot of antibiotics and they had messed with my gut health. I hadn't taken probiotics. That was then. This is now. This is like 10 years ago. And I suffered severe magnesium deficiency that nobody realized was something that I was going through. They, th they thought I was nuts, basically. And they kept telling me to take sedatives to go to sleep. But I couldn't sleep at all. And it turned out like you have to have 2.0 whatever. I forget, but 2.0 in your blood stream. But magnesium can be fine in your blood, but actually on a cellular level, you could have none. And um, I was so low that it was even detectable on my blood test that I had like 0.02 or something. And the doctor could not believe that my heart had still been pumping blood. So I was in the cardiac unit for a week and they pumped me so full of magnesium. And when I left the hospital, all those many years ago, I've never felt better. At the time I was a vegan and I didn't know that part of what was causing the endless cycle of me getting sick was the wheat and the wheat, gl wheat gluten, which is what that sea tan, the faux meats that a lot of vegan people that eat processed, like I, then I became like a raw I went on a raw food journey for a while and it didn't work out because I've always told you guys I stopped being a vegan because I had a boy and I have a husband and they don't eat that way. But I don't want to die and I don't want to use inhalers that make me crazy because I keep getting pneumonia and I need to lose weight because 
I also have sleep apnea, which is not the end of the world. I did do a sleep study that I flipped out and left from. You guys realize I'm very hyper and I don't like things like that and I hate going to the doctors. I'm sure you people have figured that out. But when you can't sleep for three days in a row and your chest is full of congestion and your pumping inhaler after inhaler and nothing is helping you and you're going to Aldi's and pigtails, something's got to give. So I've made a decision now, you know, I'm ratting myself out because by telling you guys about it, it makes me want to save face and do it. And maybe by leaning on you guys to not really make me do it, but by telling you guys about it and sharing what I'm going to embark It'll make me accountable because I'm not going to come here and not show progress. I'm not that type of person. I am exactly what I say I'm going to do. And if I fail, me, honestly, it could kill me. This is a life-threatening situation. Sleep is important. I can't go on and on and on without sleeping. And I can't keep using inhalers and these things that make me crazy hyper and depleting my body of magnesium and it's valid nutrient, the like valuable nutrients that my body needs. So there, confessions of a Dollar Tree addict and a flour addict and a sugar addict. You guys know that I love my sweets, but today uh, is a new day and it's day one and I have my delicious cup and in it, was water, I hate water, I hate drinking water, that I put frozen cherries in, which I'm allowed to have. They're still carbs, but it's okay. And I drank all the water, and now I get to eat the cherries that defrosted in my cup, and it's satiating me for the day. And I, I guess, I'm not a hoarder. I'm not a hoarder. But um, I will be honest with you guys because it's just what I do. I Food is something that I do have issues with. Food is definitely something that I have issues with. I'm not a food hoarder, but I would say that I definitely don't mind having things in my pantry, which I'm about to show you guys, that maybe I shouldn't have in there anymore or I shouldn't have bought to begin with because I don't eat them. But... We all buy things from the Dollar Tree that sometimes we don't eat or we shouldn't eat because we know better. So I'm going to go through my pantry and get rid of things that are loaded with sugar and flour. I'm, I'm not going to throw away the pasta, obviously, because my son and husband, although John has decided that he is going to do this with me, Chris obviously doesn't have to unless they choose to eventually Maybe I'll find really awesome things to make that are healthier and eventually they will want to eat it because they want to. But I'm just going to get rid of things. I haven't even cleaned out my pantry in a while. This is real life, guys. I just got this cereal. I still have the receipt. I'm going to return it. It's full of sugar and wheat and I really cannot have it anymore. I cannot eat anything that contains wheat. I am severely allergic to it and I need to accept it. I'm just going to donate these things to the pantry, I decided. I don't need them. They're not serving me. And I absolutely just cannot have them. Or even things like this. Now, if you guys remember, this is from the Dollar Tree. Well, this one is actually not from the Dollar Tree because the one from the Dollar Tree is long expired. But it happens to be one of my very favorite sauces that exist. And I had told you guys that a long time ago. But look, soy and wheat. It's a absolutely something that I cannot eat and it's my favorite you guys like I have been using this for years so no more no more items like this I can't have them see like this basmati rice I'm still gonna eat rice sometimes I can have rice I'm not allergic to rice and it's not flour or wheat or sugar yes it breaks down to carbs I get that but I know that if I cut everything else out of my diet, I won't have this inflammation. And things like this, this is sugar, but it doesn't have added sugar. It is 
sweetened with natural grape juice. Things like that I can have in moderation and I'm going to really try hard to learn what moderation is. But things like this, I can no longer have. I mean, my son can have them and I'm going to make a bucket that I put in his room because I cannot even have them in front of me because I love stuff like this. I actually bought these at TJ Maxx. They are so yummy and delicious. If I keep eating things like this, I'm going to end up dead. So they have to go. <laughs> but isn't it funny how it has this little heart with the hands on it? That's the opposite of what it's doing for me. It's literally items like this are what is causing me to not be able to breathe or sleep at night. So they have to go. Now I know that this has a little sugar in it. I'm not ready to get rid of that yet. And I know that this has sugar in it, but my husband loves barbecue sauce. But the silver lining is that, look at this, as I'm cleaning out the pantry, I came across my long lost pair of sunglasses that I got from Timu. And not only are they pink, but they're also rose tinted glasses. And I definitely need to see the world through rose tinted glasses right now to keep it keep it going. I think, that, I think that when I found my long lost bracelet, it was actually a sign that my family was ready to help me on this journey. And now that I found my favorite rose tinted glasses, we're definitely on the road to something. And then of course, the Dollar Tree always provides, I bought a ton of my freeze dried fruit favorites to snack on whenever the mood strikes. So I think that that is pretty good for day one. And um, I'm not saying that I'm not gonna buy them because there are people, I have a Dollar Tree channel and I like to share with you guys what's new in the Dollar Tree. And maybe I'll have a moment of weakness and buy it or maybe I'll buy it to give away. I have tons of things right here, right now, uh, that I'm dropping off at the food pantry, including my favorite, which by the way, even though they had expired, they were still delicious. But I'm getting rid of those, and maybe not forever, but maybe for now. I don't know that I have the ability to have just one bowl of noodles and leave it at that because I always need more. Like, it triggers sugar cravings for me. So, we'll see what the future holds. There's alternatives, some of which make me sick. I cannot use fake sugar, which is why I'm satiating my need for something sweet with fruit sugar. Just defrosted cherries. I don't mind buying them and this was the most delicious glass of water. Tiny glass albeit but I don't mind that because artificial sweeteners all make me sick. I like I like monk fruit sweetener but only a little. If I start to use it a lot it will ultimately hurt my stomach. Um, so it's not really necessarily something that everybody out there cares about, but I needed to share what was going on with me. I hadn't slept in three nights. I couldn't even go to Connecticut to see my aunt because I can't drive when I'm like that. And I know like a lot of you are like, oh, well you drive and talk to us all the time. I know when I can't drive and I know when I can. And when you have been sleep deprived for three days, you cannot be driving. Um, last night, thank God, thank God, I got five hours of sleep which is a lot for me at this point because I'm sleeping maybe four hours a night. And I've, I've had that kind of sleep schedule four or five hours um, on and off when I get like this where I have to use a lot of inhalers for a long time in my life and it really messes with your circadian rhythms because I love to be snoozing by 9.30, you guys. I am definitely an old soul, <laughs> but... Um, I'm finding new projects to do earlier in the day and I'm not going to stress myself about being awake or maybe not being able to sleep when I feel like I should be sleeping as opposed to stressing myself out and losing more magnesium because I do actually have medical proof from doctors who have explained to me that PTSD, high levels of cortisol, deplete your body of magnesium and other electrolytes just naturally. And so instead of allowing myself to get all dysregulated, I'm just going to find positive things in advance to do in those moments where I believe maybe I will be sleeping and then I wake up sleepless. Instead of stressing myself out to the point where I go to an emergency room, 
I can make a plan to not go out for the next day or, or have my husband take me out or hopefully I get past this hump because I, I am breathing better. The congestion, thank God, is gone and I am cutting these foods out of my life and it's not easy because I love sweets. I'm not going to lie. I don't eat a lot, but I'm overweight because I know that I have very high levels of cortisol and I've been on every diet and I know the one that works. The only diet that works is eating tons of meat, which I didn't do when I was a vegan, is eating tons of protein and lots and lots of vegetables. And when I do that, my skin is amazing. I, I don't love juicing. I'm going to be honest. I lived a life where I juiced a lot. It made me throw up. I have a really bad stomach. And juicing is not for me. I actually enjoyed juicing. I actually like green juice. Can't have it. I'm allergic to it. So that's not necessarily an option, although it's super good for you. Um, for me, what works for my body is eating lots and lots of vegetables cutting corners like you guys know I like to get my hacks in and this is my own hint water hint hint I need another cherry because I'm cutting all sugar out of my diet and I'm basically detoxing and honestly one of the hardest things to do in life is detox your body off of refined sugars and 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 flour guys you could literally go crazy like go, go crazy crazier than pigtail marina from a few days ago un floured, unsugared marina could be even crazier. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to Aldi's and pigtails again. But if you guys see me in hot pants, run because I'm probably going to be psycho because there's such a thing as like, um, well, you guys have heard of hangry. I can't even imagine the kind of hangry I'm going to be in a few days with no flour and no sugar because um, it's been a comfort for me for a lot of years. I got sober in AA. I drank coffee and cake to get sober. I didn't eat coffee and green beans. <laughs> I ate cake and I like candy and I do love my sweet. I honestly, I don't even love a lot of sweet treats. I don't eat a lot of dessert. What I like to do is in the morning, I love bread. I love bread and butter like French style bread and butter or I just love bread and butter. It's my favorite, my favorite. I could just have a cup of coffee and a, like a, what are those things called? The, the Christmas breads, like a sweet bread. Like what are those things that I bought? I have brain fog. That's another one of the symptoms of sleep apnea and all this inflammation that's happening in my body is brain fog. That's why I'm a dingling and I'm always saying I have dingling itis. I am not a dingling. I have become a dingling because of the brain fog that is taking place. So I can't even remember the name of that bread, but you guys know the one that I'm talking about. I bought it at my D and D's hall and they sell it everywhere during the holidays, but it's out all the time and it's so yummy. But the big ones are really delicious. These small, I'm th I can't even talk about them anymore. I'll try to put a picture right there because you guys know what I'm talking about. If you toast it with butter, you have your coffee in the morning, mm -mm -mm, good. But there's nothing I like more than like good bakery sliced bread or rye bread. And actually rye flour, I can have. So if I find a bakery that makes bread out of actual rye flour with no wheat flour in it, perhaps that won't trigger a phenomenon of craving in me that will make me crazy and eat Sour Patch Kids at two o'clock in the morning. I don't know. I don't know what the world looks like beyond this moment, but at this very moment, I am open to the possibility of living my life processed, refined, sugar-free for sure, and white, white flour free for now, hopefully, and losing weight and hopefully sticking to it because I need to lose the weight so that my sleep apnea doesn't get worse and the inflammation in my body goes away and I don't get pneumonia for a third time this year because I, I think I might die. It really has gotten to that point. I cannot take antibiotics anymore. They really make me very, very sick. So, and 
What about if I get crazy sick? What happens then? I'm already antibiotic resistant at this age. I've got many years to go ahead of me and, you know, we're supposed to save those moments. So also, um, I don't know what, how honey will affect my whole, I don't know, but garlic and honey, um, are feel things that I feel are really natural and I'm going to try to uh, allow myself that. So maybe I'll incorporate more. Denise from Denise's halls during vlogmas shared her garlic honey remedy instead of antibiotics. And I'm really interested in that. And I will say that the other day when the inflammation was so bad, the first day before I ended up in the hospital, I did actually grate four cloves of garlic, two cloves of ginger, poured myself a broth, a hot cup of uh, bone broth that I made myself, dropped like that much ginger that I grated, garlic, and... Um, Time, time, actually is a natural expectorant. So I put some in my broth, but I also just chewed it up straight up. Took the time and chewed it up. It was not my favorite, but I chewed it up so that it masticated in my mouth, and I swallowed it, and I I could breathe without using the inhaler. And I feel a lot better now. Like I do still have that heaviness in my chest, but it's getting better and I'm really grateful and I'm alive basically. And I haven't, I, you honestly with sleep apnea and this inflammation and everything that I've had going on, I wake up not breathing from the level of inflammation and congestion that I have in my chest and if I get rid of this inflammation and I'm still waking up like that, then it's sleep apnea and I'm going to have to get one of those machines and I'll deal with that because I have PTSD and claustrophobia. I explained that to you guys. I don't know if I can handle that. Then I may have to do a surgery where they put something in. I know I can't live with that mask. I know me and I cannot. It's not, it's not an option. So there are alternatives that I'm going to consider, but this is, you know, what the doctors are recommending as step one and I'm going to take it. So I felt that I owed you guys an explanation as to what the hell is going on with that wacky, crazy redheaded me. And that's what it is. And if there are others out there who are suffering along these lines or perhaps the same lines or similar or anything, if you want to kick a habit of any kind. <sighs> Trust me, I'm about to start crying again. I'm a complete emotional basket case because I'm detoxing off of sugar and flour and I don't drink booze and I don't have too many other things. Thank God for the Dollar Tree. And that, and that even that has forsaken me this year. So I'm left to my own devices of, you know, we, I'm sharing this with you guys so that I'm held accountable and I'm making a vow to myself and others that may be interested in doing the same thing that if I'm not going to continue on this journey, I'll let people know that I'm not. But for now, that's where I'm at you guys. And I just thought you guys might wa want to know why I showed up at Aldi's and pigtails. And I've been breathless lately. I've really been breathless and exhausted and more brain fog than ever. And it's definitely hard to be me and do all the things that I do when I'm exhausted and have hardly any energy. But I so appreciate every single one of you that watches my videos or cares even to know what is going on with me. And the prayers, they work because I slept five hours last night and that is a miracle. So thank you all so much for sending positive vibes or even caring to know what's going on with me. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, guys, use the comment section down below to spark conversations about what's going on with you guys. Stay safe and stay savvy, my friends. Bye-bye. And I even have a mini stop and shop haul for you guys. I had to go to the grocery store. Well, I didn't have to, but I kind of wanted to just to walk around the outer perimeters. It's best not to be in these aisles when you're trying to avoid all the things that are tempting. It's best to stay on the outer perimeters. 
where the meat is, the dairy and cheese are, and the vegetables. But I came down this aisle to show you guys my haul. I'm getting a bag of sweet potatoes just in case I feel like I'm gonna go crazy if I don't have some kind of potato. I can have sweet potatoes. I'm getting a bag of carrots because I actually love carrots. Babe, baby Bella mushrooms. Actually, they're cheaper at Aldi's, but I'm gonna take it easy on myself today. These, these right here, the living lettuce is so cool because not only am I getting Boston lettuce, but they have the root. So I can put those in water and I'm gonna grow tiny little Boston lettuces right in my window. And they're only $1.99 today. So for four bucks, that's a whole lot of lettuce because we're gonna make burgers on lettuce today with some tomato, which is why I'm getting a whole huge bag of tomatoes because tomorrow I'm gonna make, tomorrow we're gonna have chopped meat and no rice. I'm just gonna make them chopped meat and maybe cheese filled tomatoes, stuffed tomatoes in the oven. And I'm getting, that's only $2.92. By the way, three tomatoes are usually $3 here at Stop and Shop. So that's a great buy and I'm using them today and tomorrow and they're super ripe. And I'm getting a bag of pink lady apples for $2.71. I'm buying this lettuce right here for $3, a bunch of avocados and they're having a sale on Hint Water. They're five for $5, so I'm buying my favorite flavors, cherry and raspberry. So I'm getting the heck out of this aisle because I could smell all the delicious flour and it's making me crazy all over again, but not nearly as crazy as Pigtail Aldi Marina. So hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. And I'm also going to grab some Manager Special Light Cream because the sweetener that I love to put in my coffee does have sugar in it and I can't use that anymore. So I'm going to try this and see if it pushes me over the edge. Let's see, I'm just gonna put light cream in my coffee at home. I did have it from 7-Eleven and I could handle it, but sometimes I only like the coffee when they brew it at the 7-Eleven. Also gonna grab some unsalted chicken broth. They're on sale, two for $4. Um, I like that they're non-GMO and they really don't have any added sugars or anything like that. They're not organic, but they're good for now because if I feel like I need to drink water, I can drink this in place of water because you guys are getting it. I don't love water. 